On Sunday, August 5, 2012, a white supremacist opened fire on a gudwara, or sick house of worship, killing six people in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. As the news reports developed and as the facts uh, became known uh, to the public, it, it was really just a sinking feeling, I think, collectively, not just for the Sikh community, but for Americans more generally. The prevailing stereotype, uh, which has been perpetuated by the media, is that if somebody wears a turban, they're associated with Al-Qaeda. The tragedy revealed an underreported reality for Sikhs living in the U.S. Sikhs have been in the United States for more than 100 years, and ironically, uh, despite being among the most visible people in this country, in some respects were invisible. After 9-11, Sikhs around the United States were subjected to hate crimes and other forms of discrimination. Uh, this manifested itself in, in harassment, verbal harassment, but also in some cases physical violence. And in fact, on September 15, 2001, uh, the first high-profile casualty of post-9-11 backlash was Mr. Bobir Singh Sodhi in uh, Mesa, Arizona. He was an entrepreneur and he was shot and killed outside his gas station by uh, somebody who um, mistook him for one of the terrorists. Just after 9-11, the Sikh coalition was formed to protect the religious and civil rights of Sikhs living in the United States. We uh, resolved to address uh, the challenges of bias and discrimination and violence towards Sikhs in a proactive way. These uh, challenges haven't abated uh, in the last 11 years. Uh, for example, uh, the Sikh Coalition has conducted surveys of Sikh children in New York City and in the San Francisco Bay Area and has found that between 50 and 75 percent of turban-wearing Sikh children are subjected to bullying and harassment. We lobbied the government in New York City to pass, for the first time in that city, the strongest anti-bullying laws probably anywhere in the country. We've conducted surveys of Sikh adults in New York City and San Francisco and have found that upwards of 10 percent have experienced physical violence or property damage on account of their religion. About 10 or 12 percent of them uh, have suffered job discrimination and Sikhs continue to face racial and religious profiling, particularly at American airports. In January 2011, the Sikh Coalition wrote to Attorney General Eric Holder and asked him to direct the FBI to begin tracking hate crimes against Sikhs, because this has been a persistent problem. The FBI never acceded to our request. Now we have a situation where in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, you've had six murders, and you have no way of, of, of documenting them on the FBI's hate crime incident uh, report form. They track hate crimes against Muslims and Jews and uh, various Christian denominations and even atheists and agnostics. And the advantage of doing so for, for law enforcement is that it gives them a sense of exactly which communities they need to be working with in order to address these problems proactively. What we've argued is, is that if the FBI begins to track hate crimes against six and has a, has a category on their form that, that uh, can be checked off, that, that documents the fact that a hate crime has occurred against a Sikh, it will actually encourage Sikhs proactively to, to start reporting these things. Vigils remembering the dead were held across the country, but left many wanting to do more. In early September, the Sikh Coalition and over 150 faith-based organizations petitioned the Senate Judiciary Committee, formally asking for a hearing on hate crimes. Uh, it was extraordinary. Uh, members of the Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu communities, member of the secular community, various uh, civil liberties organizations, the NAACP, and it was truly a cross-section of the diversity and pluralism of the United States. It was really a very positive uh, signal to us that there was just so much um, solidarity with our community, regardless of religion, regardless of, of political affiliation and this kind of thing. The Senate Judiciary Committee agreed, and on September 19th, the hearing on hate crimes and the threat of domestic terrorism was held on Capitol Hill. I would like to thank Senator Durbin. Harpreet Singh Sayani testified with over 400 members of the religious community looking on. His mother was killed in the shooting at their house of worship. I know what happened at Oak Creek was not an isolated incident. I fear it may happen again. I don't want anyone to suffer what we have suffered. I want to build a world where all people can live, work, and worship in America in peace. Our hope is that over time, we will translate all of this goodwill 
and all of the support into public policy, better laws, stronger laws that protect not just six, but all Americans against religious discrimination, against hate crimes, school bullying, racial profiling, and job discrimination.